Hi, this is Connor for Avid Visions, and welcome to another photo fact of the week. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about noise. Uh, that is, the effects of high ISO on your image quality and why this all happens. Um, so, we all pretty much know by this point, hopefully, what noise looks like. It's basically a breakdown of pixels in your image. So, for an example, say you have a flower, this is kind of the classic example, in low light, and everything is blue, um, but you'll, if you have too high of an ISO, because this is all in a shadow, say, you'll start to get, say, like, random red pixels or redder pixels and a lot of grain kind of in the shadowy areas of the image especially. So, so that would be like we have our light source over here in this, this part of the picture down here, pardon me, is in shadow. Um, so it'll start to get noisy, uh, you lose sharpness, a lot of the fine details lost. Um, yeah, I'm using the word noise in the definition. Uh, this, this is just what noise is. If you don't know what this is, take your camera, boost the ISO as high as it'll go, and take a picture. You'll see immediately what I'm talking about. So, um, this discussion is about why that all happens, actually. And I like to think about what is actually happening on the sensor of my camera. So we're going to say this is the sensor, right? We, we have our outline of our camera built up around it. We'll give the little Nikon red finger, because I shoot Nikon. Alright, so this is the sensor. Our lens is coming out this way, right? Sorry, it's all kind of the same color and blending together. But um, we have all this light coming into the lens and landing on the sensor. And the sensor is actually a composite of a ton of different little sensors. So it's going to be a little confusing here. Try to stay with me. Uh, I have to use the word sensor a lot. But um, your camera has a megapixel rating, and every pixel corresponds to a little mini image sensor, right? So each one of these little squares we're calling a pixel, and um, each square is going to be reading the value of light that it comes in, that comes in. It, it saves it as a charge, um, or it's just basically reads the energy that was in the light, and then it takes that information and then writes it to a memory card and stuff over here and formats it, and later you can recreate an image based on that. So, um, what we have with this is, put that over there a little bit, um, you can think of it as for every single pixel on the sensor, right, so every little, every little box right there, um, we're going to be reading how much red light hits it, how much green light hits it, and how much blue light hits it. It's actually a little bit more complicated than this because um, not every pixel reads every kind of light, uh, but we're not going to worry about that for right now. So this is the color that gets measured, and we're going to say this is the intensity of the light that was measured. Um, so say, I'm going to redraw the image sensor, right? So just right down here. So say our picture is going to be, we have uh, some grass down here, right? And then we're going to also have, um, I don't know, a tree. It's going to be a kind of weird colored tree, sorry. Uh, and yeah, so all down here is green. All of here is green. Then we have just kind of like a oh, cloudy sky in the background. So that's the picture on our sensor, or what we're calling the picture on our sensor. And... Um, so now we have to think, we're breaking it down into all these pixels again, right? So this image is just being projected by the lens onto each little pixel in this array. And obviously, um, so cameras are rated in megapixels. Mega is the prefix that means one million. So... Obviously, this drawing is not really to scale. We're going to have tens of millions of pixels on your camera to get a really fine detail. But 
let's look at what happens at say this pixel, right? So we're sampling uh, the light coming in and hitting that box and so because it's grass we're obviously gonna have a lot of green light coming in, right? We are going to be reading a lot of green. Um, men say like maybe there's some dirt below it so we'll read in some red light and there really isn't too much blue light just because we're not that part of the image. Um, so this is the intensity that these are the relative intensities that get read, right? So like that, that, and then way down there. Um, and what the ISO does is ISO sets the scale of the Y axis, right? So basically we're going to say, um, we're going to pick a point on this axis and say, oh, this is properly exposed. Right? That's the intensity that we want to get our picture properly exposed. Just That's defined by the photographer or what you want your picture to look like. Um, and so the ISO's job is to kind of scale all of the values uniformly until we get the average pixel value to this properly exposed level. And then it'll look good. So right now this is actually looking pretty nice because our green bar is right next to this area that we've defined as properly exposed and this is a green part of the image so we kind of want that however it's not quite that simple all the time because our cameras aren't perfect sadly every time you sample a signal say this is the actual amount of light that happens our camera could arbitrarily say well we only read that much or maybe we accidentally read that much right that's actually what the noise is it's this area of uncertainty, right, and uncertainty of measurement and system noise. Now, I'll come back to system noise later and explain kind of like what that actually is and like how it generates this, but the end effect is we always have this rating, or this level N, of uncertainty with our measurements. And the higher the ISO, uh, the more N matters, right? Because say we have our red here, that's the actual value, but it actually got boosted by noise, right? So you'll notice that even though this red value is like maybe a fifth of the green value, their noise tolerances are exactly the same. So by, noise, by the noise on the sensor, we've actually said we have twice as much red light hitting this area as um, we actually do, um, whereas the green is boosted kind of insignificantly. So say blue gets boosted a lot too. Um, now, if we were to say, oh, well, this, like, this area over here isn't actually what's um, properly exposed anymore. We don't agree with that. We think that we should be exposing maybe like way up here. This is what's properly exposed now. All right, we've changed we've changed our axes, so just say properly exposed is up here. So now we need to boost all of these values up to that rating. Okay, that's fine, you just need to do that sometimes. So we boost the green, so the actual green value, right, this is real green, right, this is the real sampled image, that gets boosted, again, real, right? And then this noise chunk gets boosted too, so that gets boosted up to there. So you see with the noise, we've reached, we've reached the signal, we've boosted it. Perfect. Now red, the real part of red only gets boosted to right here, right? And then the noise gets boosted up to here. So you see, in, in real, like after boosting the signal, we've like enhanced the noise and made this pixel a lot more red than it should be. There's too much red compared to the other values in this pixel. And I guess the same, the same thing does happen to blue. Um, it's just more common that it happens to red uh, for reasons that I will explain later. Um, but so the end result of this is that in your image over here, right around here, uh, if you're in the shadow of a tree or whatever where you're going to have to be boosting these values a lot more with a high ISO, you're going to start to get some 
grainy pixels, right? The, pic the neighboring pixels will get different amounts of noise because this is just random, right? These margins are random. We could get it perfectly right, but there's no guarantee. Um, so you start to have a non-uniformity of your image as adjacent pixels are randomly not the same amount of each color value. Uh, and color noise happens when a single color gets a large noise signal or large noise to signal ratio like this red here or this blue and um, skews skews the coloring of the image because we have like too much red in this pixel so we'll say oops there's like a little red splotch there on the image and it's just one pixel wide so it's easy to gloss over but it's definitely there um, and so all of this happens actually noise happens across the sensor kind of uniformly more or less um, but it only shows up in the shadows because that's where we need to boost stuff the most and where the signals are going to be so small that the noise is going to be about as large as the signal. Um, but all this happens because we have so many pixels shoved onto this sensor, right? Whenever you are letting light hit these things, they're absorbing energy, they're then relaying information, and you have millions and millions of wires that are on a microscopic level, um, literally micrometers wide. Uh, they're just getting transferred around all over the place. And that causes a lot of heat on the sensor. And heat is also energy, right? It's just molecules moving, you can have electrons moving and stuff, and that bashes around through all these pixels and can actually cause pixels to give kind of a false positive almost and say, oh yeah, we totally got this signal here, when really it was actually just the five people around it or whatever are just getting really, really hot and uh, sinking their heat into that pixel by accident. Um, there's also a lot of other stuff with magnetic induction, just you have a lot of changing currents while all around one another inducing magnetic fields on neighboring pixels, so that's a little bit more complicated, but the end result is the same, you just get this, uh, this noise that gets induced into the picture, and again that happens randomly throughout the entire picture. Um, so hopefully you can see that this is where noise comes in and where all these random colors come in and why you might not want to always put your ISO uh, super, super large. So I will just finish off this discussion with some food for thought. Um, does anybody maybe want to leave in the comments why having more megapixels might not be so great? Um, I know that there's a common trend nowadays for cameras to just be shoving more and more megapixels into their sensors. Uh, the D800 has 36 megapixels or 36,500,000 pixels. Um, and so I'm asking you guys, why would you maybe not want so many pixels? Personally, I use a D3S that only has 12.1 uh, megapixels, so literally a third of the resolution of the D800. But I think that this is a better sensor for my needs than this one. Um, so that's obviously scaled down quite a lot. You can't actually use a sensor that's only, what, uh, I don't know, 25, 30 pixels large. But just kind of think about how light were to, would hit all of these pixels and how much energy would be read um, if the same amount of light, the same image is hitting each sensor. And then think about how that has to be amplified. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Once again, this has been Connor for Avid Visions. Have a nice week.